Hi everyone, it's Vicky here and welcome to the sixth day of my Christmas art journal series. Today's inspiration comes from this die set. These are the ornamental birds and uh, I am going to use one of the ornaments, a bird, and I will combine it with my favorite die of this series, which I have used in two of my projects already. Today, instead of working on my art journal book, I will work on a loose watercolor paper. This is thick watercolor paper and the size is 8x8. This is going to give you the option to either adapt it for a page if you want to work inside an art journal, but you can also turn this into a canvas or even on a page like this one that you can then frame for decorating purposes. Now, since I have to cover up a big area with color, I am going to go with uh, sprays. These are my favorites lately. And um, I was uh, envisioning something that had to do with uh, pale blues and silver uh, colors and grays. So I decided to go with speckled tech and uh, iced spruce. This is a great combination and uh, I am using oxide sprays. So this is going to have a really muted look and a chalky finish. This provides a lovely wintry background and you can leave it like that if you want. If you love grungy and distressed or uh, vintage look, then you can go over it in a, a few areas. And this is walnut stain, just to add a touch of brown here and there. If you want, you can spray a little bit of water on top of your background to help all those colors blend even more. You can even move the paper up and down to help them uh, blend even better. And I'm using my heat gun to make sure that everything is completely dry before the next step. Now I'm going to do some stenciling. For that I'm using a lovely stencil that has that plaid design on top. And I'm going over in uh, different areas using a uh, speckled egg. This is the same ink that I used for the background. So I'm not introducing any new color. This is going to add some visual interest on the background. But at the same time it's not going to turn it into being vibrant which is always my goal with my background since I like them to be quite subtle. Stenciling is one of my go-to techniques when it comes to backgrounds. Another one that I love doing is applying with a stencil instead of ink embossing paste. I'm not going to do that for this background. I'll stop with stenciling here and I'm going to move on to stamping, another go-to method. This time I'm using a text uh, stamp and I'm going to stamp with archival ink. This is... Uh, faded jeans but the name of the ink doesn't really matter. What I usually do is uh, try to stamp with a couple of shades darker ink than my background. So again you can see that visual texture but it's not very vibrant. Now I'm going to move on to a really fun technique and I will create a snow frame all around my project. For that you need a quite wide double-sided tape as well as Flakes. Now these are by Stamperia, Snowflake by Stamperia. They are absolutely gorgeous. This is not glitter. They are very lightweight, so they are going to stick on uh, any type of glue really easily. You can use matte medium if you like or any other type of glue in paste form. You can even uh, use uh, white glue and stick them on top. I decided to work with double-sided tape just because it is mess-free. So since I'm uh, using this wide double-sided tape, I'm going to tear it into half. So I do have long strips, but they are thinner. Plus I like that tiered edge, which isn't completely straight. It gives a more organic look and it would look better when I stick the flakes on top. If you like your result to be more neat, you can just use a straight line and create a perfectly straight frame all around your project. So you can see how I did one side. I'm going to repeat the same process for all four sides. And then I'm going to apply on top my snowflakes. I am working on a scrap piece of paper so that I can easily put back in the jar all the leftovers and I can use them again. These uh, snowflakes are chunky but really very lightweight so they are going to stick nicely on top of the double-sided tape and you can even use your fingers and press it down firmly just to make sure that they are going to stay put. I had no problem with them falling out once they were down there and I went over that double-sided tape with my fingers just to make sure that I don't feel any stickiness at all anywhere making sure that it is completely covered up with snow. And of course I do have to add my white splashes. After all I am going for a wintry look and feel. 
Now I'm going to put this background aside for those blushes to dry and I will work on my focal points. I use the ornamental birds die and uh, I cut out one of the birdies three times. A couple of times from uh, different uh, shades of uh, red cardstock and one more time out of black. I put my bird together and if you notice I do have a foam square at the back of the a wing that is at the front, so this way I add some dimension and I am going to use a second wing at the back just to have some more depth. Now, since this is a wintry look and feel project, I want my birdie to be a cardinal. That's why I want to add a touch of uh, black on his face. And this is why I cut out the bird out of black cardstock so that I can cut out a little piece with my scissors that is going to fit just behind his nose. Remember that you can be creative, even more creative with your dyes and you don't have to use only the pieces that are included. You can improvise and make them your own. Now these are the dyes that are included in the set with the birdies that create the ornaments. You can mix and match them to create different styles and I love the retro look and feel on them. I did use three of them and I'm going to stack one on top of the other and the middle paper that I have die cut is actually silver cardstock so it's going to give a little bit of shine through those holes. Now mix and match all those different die cuts. There is no correct way of how you can put them together. I do want to add some dimension so that's why I'm using foam squares at the back and then I'm going to stick that on the other red cardstock. Now the one that I have at the back is slightly darker so it is going to give the hint of a shade. The idea is to have the birdie holding the ornament and I'm going to give him this branch to sit on but I want to create a visual triangle with red. So again I'm going to use the same cardstock that I used for the bird and the ornament and I'm going to die cut berries. Now in the beginning I wanted to have that branch green but as I move along and I see the project and the way it is going I absolutely love the colors that I have already so I don't want to add a new color to introduce a new color. That's why I'm going to die cut this branch one more time but this time I'm going to use silver cardstock. I think that uh, that silver cardstock with the snow that I have on the frame and the little silver accents on the ornament are going to blend nicely and it's going to bring the whole thing together. To add more interest on my leaves I'm using a tool here and I'm just drawing lines. I am doing that on a soft area and uh, of course you can do that on a mouse pad if you like and if you don't have such a tool like the one that I'm using here just use the back of a brush or something quite pointy that is not going to tear the paper however. Since I'm planning to frame this project I can add some dimension so I'm using my fingers to add some curve on the leaves and then I can stick it down. If you are adapting this idea and work inside the pages of a book then you can just stick everything completely flat. I'm adding some shadows on the red pieces. This is going to help them look more dimensional and uh, for that I'm using walnut stain. This is the brown color that I used for the background. Sometimes the less color you add on a project the more elegant it looks. And now finally it's time to stick everything down. First I'm going to start with the branch. I'm starting by sticking down the branch making sure that I have enough space at the top for the bird to stay there. And I didn't uh, completely stick it down. You can see that uh, I have the leaves curled up. And now I'm placing the ornament and the bird to try to decide where I want them to be. And then I am going to create a couple of holes where his nose is and at the back of the center of the ornament. And I'm just using a ruler here to make sure that these are completely vertical. And then through those two holes I'm going to thread some silver line. This is going to look as if the bird is holding that thread and the ornament is hanging from that. Of course you can use a needle if that is more helpful but I did uh, make quite big of those holes so I can easily thread it at the back and then I'm going to secure it with double sided tape. I'm going to do the same thing for the other hole. I absolutely love when a project has different uh, elements and not just uh, paper. So you see here I have the snowflakes, the thread. I think that it uh, makes the project look so interesting and that's why I love mixed media. Now I'm going to stick the bird down and if you want you can even add more dimension by using foam tape at the back. 
but his wing is already popped up, so I think it's just fine. I'm going to stick the ornament directly on top of my project as well, since it has dimension on the top layer of the ornament. And then finally I'm going to stick down the berries and you can see the visual triangle there with all the red accents on my page. Now I am also going to use that uh, silver thread and I'm going to tie a little bow which I'm going to stick at the top of the ornament just to add uh, some more texture on the project. And the way this project is designed has enough uh, a blank space just next to the ornament where you can add a quote if you like. That's of course not necessary on a mixed media project, however I absolutely love adding quotes on my projects and that's exactly what I'm going to do. You can stamp there, you can die cut, you can stick uh, stickers, it uh, really has enough space for you to play with. I decided to go with a combination of die cut elements and a chipboard quote, so I die cut the letters to spell the word peace and then on top I'm sticking down Peace on Earth. This is a chip quote by Tim Holtz. It is quite dimensional and I love the red letters that matches perfectly with the rest of my project. This is how it's going to look inside a shadow box. I didn't put the glass on top which I always like to do to avoid dust. But you do get the idea of how it looks, I just wanted to avoid the glare of the glass under the camera. So here are some close-up photos, just like always you will find linked down below everything I used to create this project. So I hope that you had fun today, that you got inspired and don't forget to leave me a comment. Thank you all so much for watching and have a lovely day.